Hello and welcome to the fourth tutorial. Today I'll be showing you more Python and talking about good coding style. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up Genie. Um, and the last thing I did in Genie was our first program. Um, so I'm going to make a new Python file at the moment and delete everything apart from this top line here. Um, and then I'm just going to save that. Yes, let's see. Uh, second program dot py. There we go. Um, I've got a cold today, so that's why my voice sounds a bit funny. Um, <coughs> I'm so sorry if I'm like coughing or anything like that, but I'll try and edit it out. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is um just basically write down what makes good code and style and then um, those three speech marks what they are that means like a block of comments so um you'll see so if i write good coding style um basically anything inside those speech marks um and you can see here there's like a line down them to indicate where it starts and ends um won't anything in there won't be interpreted by Python and I can also put in um comments with a hash. So like hello, this is a comment. That wouldn't be interpreted by Python as code, it's just ignored. Um so I think I think anyway good coding style is probably the most one of the most important things about coding because it means that your code is easy to read. Um and also well designed. So um, I'd say one of the most important things about good code and style is to use comments, as I've just shown you. And that's because um, if you're working on something quite complicated, um, you can put comments for yourself to explain how exactly it works or how your code works. And then if you come back to it in a few weeks and you've forgotten, then your comments are there. And also, in the future, if you're working on a big project um, with multiple programmers, they need to be able to understand how your code works. Um, I'd say another important thing is self-documenting identifiers. So if you're going to have a variable that stores someone's first name, call it first name rather than like variable or something like that. Um, and the same with functions as well. If you've got a function that's that adds two numbers up um you should uh, describe that in the name rather than just calling it function one um and i'll show you about functions later as well uh another important thing is spaces tabs and tidiness basically um your code is a lot more presentable and a lot easier to see and understand. It's a lot clearer if it's well spaced out. So um, have a like blank line between sections of code, tab your code for like if statements and where and stuff like that. Um, and I'll show you all examples of this uh, when we get to the coding part. And I'd say the last thing is probably um, reusable code. And uh, having reusable code speeds up the development process a lot, um, as well as testing. Because if you've got one piece of code, basically, if if you're going to repeat the same process, why not have it in a function, um, rather than copying and pasting the code? It looks better. If you want to make changes to that one piece of code, you only have to change it once rather than changing all of it. Say you did. Say if you copied it loads you'd have to change them all rather than just changing the one and it just makes like also reusable code you could for example use your function in multiple programs and not just the one that you're developing so it can come in quite handy and it's good style to get into okay so let's say if we have a program that prints some names out uh, just like to show you the ideas I think it's a good idea to start a program um, 
describing what it does. So let's say this program will uh, will print a list of names. Uh, this program will print a list of names, and then because I've used multi-line comments, I'll just say by Liam Fraser. Um, and you can see there I've put two spaces. Um, so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to make a function called greet. And the way I'm going to do that is define by uh, df greet brackets name and then dot dot. Um, so I'll just explain this statement to you. Define means define. Uh, that's quite straightforward. A greet is um, the name of a function that you define. A name is something that you're going to pass through to the function. Um, and you'll see what this means when I when I uh, finish off the code. But basically, pa actually, um, Python's quite good as well about tabbing, um, like indenting, because you have to indent for stuff like this to work. Um, so let's say if we do print hello comma and then name and using that using name um and then we and then we can finish this statement off basically so uh, what we've got here is define greet name and then every time you call the function greet it's going to print hello and then whatever name you've passed to it so if i say greet um if i say greet liam uh what's that what that's going to do is name is going to become liam it's going to call greet and then write hello liam so if i run over you it says hello liam okay um now that that looks quite tidy i think um, where stuff like spaces and tabs becomes like really important is say if you've got something like uh, I'm not going to actually make it work but so if I've got like a if and then a key condition like so I'll just put condition if a condition and then dot dot and then under that you've got where and then um and then another if under that. So if you're starting to use like nested code, um, it becomes a lot more straightforward if you space it out. Um, so it's a, so it's like so if I put a statement one plus one, um, and this wouldn't be valid code, but um, you see what I mean by spacing it out. Um, it's a good habit to get into definitely right so that's going to say greet Liam um, and that's reusable now so if I want to do greet uh, let's say raspberry pi and then run that that's going to print them both and then we can expand on this as well so let's say uh, what else can we print? We can print. Uh, how are you? Question mark. Run our view that. Hello, Liam. How are you? Hello, Raspberry Pi. How are you? Okay, so what I've done is I've put together a little example of um, just to demonstrate what I think good code and style is. So. We've started off with um, saying this program takes a list of marks out of 10 and then calculates an average. Okay, and then we need to declare a variable called count um, to hold the number of times we've collected a mark. And that's for use in this while statement a bit later on. Um, make a variable called total to hold a running total. And then make a new list and basically a list is a collection of objects um with okay so let's say uh, make a new list called 
marks list. Um, and that's just a list that's going to hold the marks. Um, but let's let's think. I'm just trying to think of um, a list, basically, if you look down here. Uh, list. Okay, basically, a list uh, has an index and a value. So, index value. Um, and when I make a new list here, it's not going to have anything. Um, <clears throat> but when I go marks list dot append and then new mark, um, you'll get uh, zero and then whatever the mark is. So let's say five. And then next time you call it, you'll get one and then eight, say. And that'll keep going on until um, until the while statement finishes, um, which is going to be eight times because it's a zero. Uh, it starts at zero and then all the way up to until it's um, more than seven. So that's going to be eight times. Um, so I'm just going to basically walk you through how the code works. So we've declared our list, and then we're saying um, while count is less than or equal to seven. So basically, until until we've got eight, um, you make a variable called new mark, and then we're saying we're calling the function input, um, which basically says on which basically shows on the terminal it's going to say input mark out of ten, and then what we've got is we've got a an uh, open bracket, and then we're ending ends in this string um, and basically what a string is is it's text and um, an integer is a number but um, I'll talk more about data types in the next tutorial um, but basically count is an integer because it holds a number however the function input only accepts string values so we need to use the str function um, to convert count to a string so we can display that. Um, so what we're going to basically have is we're going to have input mark out 10, whatever number your count is, then close your brackets and a space. Um, then once that's input, um, we're going to have marks list append, which is basically add, um, and then new mark. So we're feeding in the new mark that we've just got into the list. Then uh, we increment the running total, so total is whatever's in the total before, add on the new mark, and same with count, counts whatever it was before, we add on one, so we increment the count. And then down here I've got note, the function str converts what is passed to it to a string. We now have a collection of eight marks input by the user and the total, so that's by the time we've got to the end of the while statement, that's what we've got. Um, and then we're going to work out average, um, the average mark by saying total uh, divide average equals total divided by 10 uh, total is what we've been making the whole way through um, and then divide by 10 is divide by 10 and then once we've got that average we're going to print um, average mark equals and then a space and then we need to convert average to string um, and then forward slash 10 so out of 10 and uh You'll see what's going to happen here. Now, I've not put any error handling in this. Um, I'm asking for marks out of 10. But you could put in more than 10, which would then obviously give a bad average. Um, because it, it could be more than 10, so I'm going to say 6, uh, 3, let's say 9, 8, 7, 6, 7, 8. So the average mark there is 5 out of 10 um, and that's basically another simple program um, but demonstrating a couple more things so we've got mathematical operators here um, inputs the, the string function and uh, a list as well um, 
so I hope you've enjoyed that um, tutorial. I'm keeping my eye out on the uh, Raspberry Pi website. I've got the RSS feed on my phone, so um, as soon as they're up for sale, I'll be getting one, and then I'll be doing configuration tutorials. Um, another tutorial which I think will be quite popular is um, there doesn't seem to be much documentation on how to use <coughs> how to use um, Linux as like a wireless bridge. So basically, you plug in your wireless adapter to your Raspberry Pi and plug it into a switch, and then anything plugged into the switch can get onto. Um, can access like the internet and the computers that might be on the other side of the wireless um, of the wireless like router so uh, yeah thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and I'll, and I'll uh, have another tutorial up next week cheers